What's up everyone? Welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. <clears throat> today on the channel we're playing some Aeon's End. Doing our second stream for today. We streamed this morning to some Marvel Legendary to try out that deck builder. Haven't had it on the channel in a while so played a bit of that. Might be a little rough on the rules. Apologize for that but yeah it was fun. It's fun to get back that back to the table. Uh, now we're doing another deck, build, deck builder. We're playing Aeon's End. Thanks to everyone joining us live for those watching in the future. Uh, if you don't want to miss our live streams, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss when we go live. Also follow on Facebook, Twitter, all that business. Uh, and links are in the description below uh, so you don't miss when we go live. And thank you to our Patreon backers for supporting the channel, everyone that's donated. Uh, you can support the channel by clicking the links in the description below. Thanks to everyone that supports us here. Uh, without you, we wouldn't be doing this. So thank you so much. Uh, all right, so we're going to play Aeon's End. And we're going to try out the Nemesis. Uh, that we have not played yet. The fourth one out of the core set that we've not featured on the channel. We have played some Aeon's End on the channel if you're unaware of that. Uh, I'll try to drop a playlist uh, link in the description. If not, you can head on over to Rob's Gaming Table at YouTube. Go to the playlist section. You'll see some Aeon's End uh, there. And you can check out our other playlists. But yes, awesome solo game. Uh, also have some co-op plays of it there. Anyways, let's get down to the table. Boom. All right, we have it all set up here. Uh, thanks everyone joining us. Uh, all right. So, we're trying Brahma today. We were going to play her last stream, but the chat, uh, someone recommended it. Then the rest of you guys were like, nah, too easy. Try someone different. Uh, but we're going to play her. Supposedly she's solo friendly. We're going to try a play here against the Prince of Gluttons. And we'll see how we do. We'll probably play him twice, uh, like we did last week in the stream. Uh, so the Prince of Gluttons, 70 health, which is denoted right here. Uh, when it does the Unleash ability, which will be on different cards that come out of its three-tier difficulty deck, uh, for one to two players, we'll devour three cards from the least expensive supply pile. What is that, you say? Uh, when a card is devoured, place it on top of the devoured pile, even if the devoured pile is empty. So this is our devoured pile. As part of setup, we place the top card of each gem supply pile, starting with the most expensive face-up in a pile next to this mat. Uh, this pile is a devoured pile. So we have one from each of the gems that we got here in a devoured pile, okay? So when a card is devoured, place it on top of the devoured pile, even if the devoured pile is empty. Cards may be gained from the top of the devoured pile as if it were a supply pile. So I can purchase cards from over here, which is kind of neat. Uh, the players may look through a devoured pile at any time. Cards in the devoured pile cannot be devoured. Prince of Gluttons does not start a devoured pile on an empty supply pile. So if it's empty, he doesn't devour it. But when he would devour a card from a supply pile that is empty, uh, Gravehold suffers two damage per card instead. So if there's like one card left, he goes to devour three. For those two that are missing, he'll do two damage each to Gravehold, which is the 30 health here. I'm trying to keep that alive, otherwise we lose. Uh, and let's see, when all supply piles are empty, except for the devoured pile, we also lose that way. So there's two lose conditions here. Uh, which is pretty cool. Two loss conditions, I guess. Uh, so I set up the deck. I got her breaches ready. I got her deck started. Starting hand for Brahma. Her ability, any player gains four life. And that will cost five charges to fire that one off. Uh, for the cards here we have in the market. We have Jade. Everyone knows Jade. Two resources for two cost. Uh, four cost for this Searing Ruby. We've seen that before a few times. Uh, this was randomly generated out of an app on Android. Um, which I just did before the stream. And for those watching who are curious, let me just find where the app is. It's called Aeon's End Assistant. And that's it right there. So you can get your name, your nemesis, your mages, all that. I already was doing Prince of Gluttons and actually picked that for me. It was funny. Uh, I'm doing a different mage though. Uh, but you can, you know, if you don't like that mage, you can always hit the shuffle button, randomly get another one. Uh, but here's the first market we got. And that's what we set up. Okay. So uh, the next... Uh, gem is the six cost clouded sapphire gain three resources if this is the first time you have played clouded sapphire this turn any ally gains a charge pretty cool i like it hey knights night wish power welcome back welcome back uh, and then we have flexing dagger for two costs for a relic uh, the next time you focus or open a breach this turn it costs three uh eighth or less or destroy this to deal a damage we have Bottle Vortex. We've seen that a couple times before. For three costs, this relic, you destroy it. Then you destroy up to two cards in your hand or discard pile. Then you draw a card. Uh, we have Spectral Echo for our cheapest, uh, one of our cheapest uh, spells that on a cast can deal two damage. And you may destroy a card in hand. <laughs> yeah, I like that. 
Uh, Phoenix Flame over here. I think this is maybe the first time I played with this one. Three cost uh, for the cast. You deal two damage. Then you may lose a charge to deal two additional damage. Eh, I don't know about that one. Planar Insight we've seen a few times before. On this cast, is six cost. Uh, you can deal two damage. Deal one additional damage for each of your open breaches. So that gets good later. And I don't think I've ever seen this one before. For seven cost, Arcane Nexus. It's got one of those well-prepped abilities, so you can leave it prepped up in a breach. Uh, once per turn during your main phase, you may return a gem you play this turn to your hand. Then cast, you can deal four damage. So extra resource generation there. You can play a gem, return to hand, play it again, uh, which is awesome. Or return to hand, save it for next next turn if you want, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're lined up with. And yeah, I think we're good to go. Um, anything else? I don't think so. Oh, Buried Light uh, is her unique card. She starts with inner starting hand. Uh, you can cast it to deal damage and gain a resource. Interesting. Okay, so let's find out uh, who's first here. We'll do our turn order deck. And first is myself. So I'm playing with the uh, four of the player cards and two of the nemesis cards in the turn order deck. Okay, so let's cast the Buried Light. Uh, we got four resources. I think I'm going to take a Jade and a Flexing Dagger. And I think I'll take it uh, in that order. And I'll draw five more cards. And we're good, right? Player turn again. Okay, so I can gain another four resources if I cast this and deal three damage total, which I will cast it. So I'll deal a damage down to 69. Oh yeah, I gotta cast these first. Ooh, yeah, that's fine. I'll cast the spark. Um, and I have four resources. Yeah, let's focus this breach. Uh, and we'll do that for, what was that, two? And then uh, we'll put that there. Another spark. And let's take a jade. Okay, uh, actually Jade should go in here. Order matters. Scott. After playing Marvel Legend this morning, I'm a little thrown off. <laughs> Don't shuffle the deck. Don't shuffle the deck. All right. Uh, then we draw back up to five. Three, four, five. Okay. Nemesis turn. Okay, so a power two card. This is the Unleashed twice. I can spend six resources to get rid of this. I don't want him devouring up a deck. Because that's what will happen there. If it unleashes twice, it's definitely... I mean, I, I picked the cheapest. I could pick a two or a two and pick a different one for the next Unleash. Um, but still, I'll be out of, out of Jades and out of Flexing Daggers real fast. Okay, so uh, do I have six resources? No, I am one short. Uh, I have to fire this off. Down to 68. I'll hold that spark there. Uh, okay, so I'll play Flexing Dagger. So the next time you focus or open a breach, this turn will cost three less. So I'll just open this one that costs three less. It's free, right? I'm pretty sure I can do it that way. Okay. Um... Then I'll spend, so five resources. I'll take a Spectral Echo. And I'll take another Jade. Okay. Let's try to jam. So these I can put in a specific order. So if I put these like this and that one last, there's a chance I could get the six I need for this before that goes off. Wait, why did I just go? 
I shouldn't have gone, right? Oh, man, I'm being dumb. Yeah, it should be Nemesis again. Uh, okay, I went out of player order. I'll just correct it by putting mine there, and we'll have the Nemesis go. Bernardo, how's it going? So thrown off every playing Legendary. Back and forth, back and forth, right? Uh, but we will go Nemesis. Uh, he'll lose power here. Draw a card. Oh, I should be up to five. Okay. Uh, so lost one there. Draw another card. Devour two cards from the second most expensive gem pile. And any player suffers two damage. So, oh, I don't have my life dice. Whoops. Okay. So I will drop down to uh, eight. Eight, eight, eight. Uh, okay, so I took two damage, uh, and it'll devour from this one. Okay. And that is that. Okay, so now my last turn here. Uh, I'll keep that spark there. I'll cast this here. And let's go with five resources. I often forget the health until I lose one. Yeah, <laughs> it feels weird putting it on the board like that. Um, I, I just need to keep a couple red dice in the box, but I put them away like in a, a stash of dice I have. I should just keep them in the box. Um, I own all of them myself, repurpose the legacy box to have them all there. And I don't have them sleeve, only older cards like Rob has. Haha, <laughs> same. Yeah. Too many cards to sleeve if you own all of it, I'm sure. Sleeved everything, even the player aid. Ooh. So if ever in the future uh, you want to sell it, I will take that. Oh, no, I'm just joking. Yours will be nice and protected. But it's always good. Like if you do protect stuff, you have it forever. It stays nice. But also if you ever want to sell it, you're, it'd be like in great condition, which is cool. Um, but yeah. Some games I'm like, I had to stop sleeving. I have so many sleeves that I'm not even using because I have to decide when I need to sleeve stuff now. Because I get so many games, it's like you start spending more on sleeves than you spend on games, it becomes a problem. So, And how many times do you actually play a game before it gets destroyed enough that it you wish it had sleeves on it? So there's that like argument of like, I don't know. And if a game has lots of shuffling, I really want to sleeve it. But this one doesn't have as much shuffling, so I like it for that. Uh, okay, so five resources. Uh, one short of this one again. Uh, okay, so I'll do another Spectral Echo. And... Let's do... Another Flexing Dagger. Okay. Uh, yeah, draw that, flip, one, two, three, four more, okay, one short again, no, oh yeah, but I get a resource off this, okay, I'm shuffling up, hopefully I had to go first, and I can get rid of this un double unleash, hopefully, hopefully, we can get there, no, the nemesis, all right, unleashing twice, uh, so smallest pile. Let's see what we have left here. I'll say you can take all the, hmm, let's do all the flexing daggers. So devour three cards, then unleash again. We'll take all the jades. Right, right. Uh, draw a card. What the heck is this? Look at these mouth ball things. Minion, the tough, or the thought biter. Persistent, any player suffers two damage or devour two relics from the least expensive relic pile. Oh, man. <laughs> Get your relics early, because they're going to be gone. All right, so this guy's getting six. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to grab some dice. Uh, let's see. Alex is saying, how often do you play Aeon's End? Do you prefer Legendary or Aeon Solo? Well, Legendary I played yesterday and this morning for like the first time in years, and the first time playing Solo. Uh, Aeon's End I've been playing, I got this, uh, over the holidays. I've played it maybe three times, like once a week I've been playing, uh, it. Played a bit of co-op, played solo also. I'm going to be honest, uh, so far I think I like Aeon's End better because of fantasy theme. I don't shuffle the deck. And, yeah, I like this little breach, breach spell thing. I like the tiered deck. Um, I don't know about the market. I do like the, I do like 
uh, Marvel's whole like uh, city and the market line like coming out live more like um, Hero Realms or Star Realms. I like that like mark row of market, but rather than the uh, Thunderstone kind of set nine cards, but uh, I'm sure you can mess with the rules to maybe make a market of these cards, shuffle these all together and have them come out like Legendary or Star Realms and that kind of thing. That would be fun. But I lean towards uh, Aeon's End. I like better than Legendary at this point. Um, but both are fairly newish to me. I have about the same experience playing both of them. Uh, and Bernardo's saying, yes, and all games have different size sleeves, which is annoying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Penny sleeves, no. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I think they did an amazing job making every boss experience different. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely like this boss. He feels different. And that's why I'm excited to play it today a couple times. All right. I'm going to grab some dice. I'll be right back, guys. And we're back. All right, got some dice. I hate fiddling with these little tokens. Uh, so six on this guy, and I need eight here. All right, there we go. Okay, so I have this jerk out here. Suffering damage or devouring relics. All right, my turn. Okay, I have somebody to hit now, but, uh, okay, yep, yeah, let's fire these both off. Uh, let's get that one in there first, this one here. So that's two damage off this guy. I have an extra resource. Let's fire this one in here, that one there. So I have six resources total. Um... Hmm. Shy here. Um, let's just gain the clouded sapphire. Get some charges going, some extra extra resources. I think. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Myself. Okay. Let's. I'll fire this two damage off. And I can destroy a card in hand, which um, oh, I should fire the spark off too, because I have a way to damage in my hand. But uh, I will destroy. Yeah, I'll just, oh, sorry, I'll destroy a crystal. Let's throw that out of the game. Okay. So this flexing dagger, next time you focus or open a breach, this turn it costs three less. Maybe I, or do I do the damage to this guy with it? I feel like that's dumb value. Better odds that I come up next anyway. I'll take the risk. Worst case, I suffer two damage or devour two relics. I'll take the two damage probably in that case. Yeah, let's just play this as normal. The next time you would focus. Okay, so in that case, I'm going to undo this play. Leave that there. Um, because if I put this one here, I have that as next turn. I can do the final two damage. Uh, so I will just focus this one here for three less so it's zero right um, then I have two resources uh, which I will grab a jade and let's throw these in like so and draw five which is my deck uh, it's my turn again okay so I'll fire this off 
to kill this guy. And that will let me destroy a card in hand. I'll destroy a crystal. Flexing dagger. Uh, let's focus here again for free. Uh, four resources. Four resources. There's no four cost spell. <laughs> uh, I guess a searing ruby? Oh, what are you guys saying in the chat here? Greetings from Germany, Caval Cavalor Winter. If I'm saying that right, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> guten Tag. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'll leave you guys to it. Uh, okay, so I'll take a Searing Ruby or... No, let's do two charges. Two charges. Yeah, right? Four resources. Or I could focus this Breach. No, charges. Let's go charges. Okay, so let's throw this in here, this in here. Flip it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, uh, who's next? Me again. Uh, okay, I'll fire off a spark. 67, okay, and I'll throw that there, that there. Uh, I gain three resources, and it's the first time I play that, so I'll gain a charge. And then two jades, so that's seven resources. There we go, there we go, that's the number I want to hear. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. And let me guess, Nemesis. Oh, I was right. <laughs> uh, any player suffers three damage or devour three spells from any spell pile. I'll take the three damage. Probably should just let him devour Cloud Sapphire, Clouded Sapphire, but... Because I don't think I'll ever buy more than like one more maybe, but I have my heal coming, might be good bet. I'm not sure what else this guy does. That's the problem. It's my first time playing him, so I don't know what the best thing is, like how bad to avoid devours. I don't know how crazy he gets with that. But if that's his mechanic, I'm going to try to hold off on that, especially since I have heal. If I didn't have heal, I would definitely go that route. Uh, but that's my, that's my decision making process on that one. Okay, so let's shuffle up. Still in the level one cards for the enemy deck, which is good. All right, it's my turn. Let's see. Uh, okay. I'll deal a damage and gain a resource. I'll throw that in there. I will focus this one using the relic for free. And I have five total resources, including this spell, plus these. So for five, I think. I'll spend. Let's go. Have you ever thought about doing a top 10 list of your favorite board and card games? What are your favorites off the top of your head? Alex, every year end, I think about it because my whole YouTube subscription feed fills up with all the tabletop gaming channels all going crazy and doing like top 10 games that use paper and cardboard and top 10 games that have a, a die in it. Like they just do top 10s of like a thousand things and it's like crazy. I guess those do very well. And I always debate doing it, but then I started thinking like, I like really diving deep and playing similar games throughout the year over and over, like, which is one of the, the things I like to differentiate on my channel is like, I'll, I'll learn a game's rule set and try to play it and experience everything in the game before like basically moving on. That's what I try to do. So that's why we play like all through Gloomhaven, all through Lord of the Rings, uh, Battles for Journeys of Middle Earth, sorry. Um, even games I don't play on the channel, we play like constantly, I'll just play through 
as much as I can fight all the all the bosses in the game before I buy expansions and that kind of stuff usually. Um, so it, when I look back at the year, it's like, how many games did I totally play, especially ones that are new for like 2019 or ones that are top 10 of all time? It's like, I've played a lot of games over the years, but I've only been in tabletop gaming since like modern tabletop gaming since like 2012 or 2011, I think is when I first got in. And uh, off the top of my head, I would start listing things off that I have like the most fun playing, especially, and I'm, I'm just getting into solo gaming too. Like that's just a, like a this year or like 2019 thing. Um, but I would have to say, I don't know, things at the top of my head, Scythe, love Scythe, love Game of Thrones, the board game, second edition. That's that game is that board game got me into this hobby, uh, playing Game of Thrones, the board game, second edition with like six players, seven players now around the table, having a great old time. You can see playthroughs of that on the channel. One of our first videos we posted on the channel was one of our six player games. I used to play that game all, like once a week for like three months and I played it with like 30, 30 to 40 different people I've taught that game to and I would just like every weekend be like, all right, I have five seats available. Who wants in? And I just played it every week. Uh, I played Game of Thrones board game second edition and that is like, I didn't realize at the time that was like a heavier, more complex game. I, I didn't start in the hobby at like Catan or uh, I didn't even play Catan for the first time until a couple of years ago. Um, I don't own Catan or Ticket to Ride, all these games like that. I totally just, they, I, they didn't mean anything to me. I came in from a, the heavier end, which I think is why I like featuring more complicated games on the channel. Um, but yes, I love that deck building games, um, hero realms, clank. I don't know my top 10 though. It's tough. I could go on all day about awesome games. Just look at, look at what I've played on the channel. If I played on the channel 99% of the time, it's cause I love it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What are you guys saying? What do you, where'd you guys start? I'm curious. Where'd you guys start in the hobby? Uh, by the way, did you hear the LOR app might not be supported anymore? Oh, I absolutely heard about that. I got into that game the day it got announced. I, whenever the early access opened, uh, the Lord of the Rings, uh, a living card game digital at the time. Now it's called the adventure card game. I have played it on the channel a few times uh, and I wanted to get into like a regular stream of it, but I noticed like the community, I could tell the game wasn't being supported. Like people weren't, are not supported. Yes, it wasn't being supported by the community. It didn't have an active player base. I could just feel it, but I loved the game. I loved playing it. It was cool to be able to quickly jump into a cooperative LCG without having to set it up. And I loved that. And I was excited for them to have more content coming. But yeah, if it wasn't making the money, people weren't buying the cards, people weren't playing it. The price was way too high on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch when it released. It's like 30 bucks or something like that. It should have been a free-to-play on those systems. That's the only way it would have built a player base. The barrier of entry is way too high for that, for that type of game. It should have been free-to-play, and I think that tanked it financially, which makes sense why they closed that development studio, because they, didn't, they, didn't, they botched the launch of that game. They botched the like model of that game. They didn't appease the community well enough. They didn't market it well enough. So yeah, it sucks that they had to let those guys go and they didn't build Keyforge digital app or something, but I mean, I wouldn't give them Keyforge if they couldn't even get a super supported uh, Lord of the Rings LCG. To be honest, from a business point of view, um, I wouldn't want them handling a um, million, million, million dollar game like Keyforge digitally or something bigger if they couldn't handle Lord of the Rings, which all they had to do was make that like a free to play buy expansion packs, make it, make, it, make it a digital LCG. If they made that a digital LCG, exactly copy the card game and people could have just bought stuff in there, it would make the living physical card game disappearing if that happens less less harsh because people could just play it there. But uh, yeah, it's too bad. It's very too bad uh, that that's disappearing. I think the game probably won't get any new content, but they said they're going to keep the servers alive for a bit. But Maybe they'll hand it off to like the in-house FFG's actual, like their digital app team that handles like the Mansion of Madness and that kind of stuff and Lord of the Rings um, Journeys in Middle Earth apps because that's a totally different software house. Also, Asmodee Digital, the publisher, they have tons of development studios. So it's very easy for them to just pass that game off to somebody else if they wanted to keep it going. But I, I don't see it keep going, it keeping going if they don't make money on it. Why would you support a game that doesn't make money? That's not smart business. So Billy says his start in the hobby was DC Comics deck building game. <laughs> My first deck building game was the uh, Lord of the Rings version of that deck building game, uh, which I picked instead of the DC Comics one. Uh, but I, I played that very early in, in my hobby. That game's awesome. Uh, 
not so awesome nowadays, but it was awesome at the time. <laughs> nowadays, it's like, eh, it's a little shallow. Uh, and Alex says he started over 10 years ago, originally played the card game, originally played card games like Magic the Gathering competitively, but after playing games like Pandemic and Catan, ah, I was hooked on them over the expensive competitive card games. Yeah, I, I can see that. Because you still get the strategy, you get your brain working, but you don't have to like chase cards and your wallet doesn't cry uh, every time you a new set drops, right? Um, but yeah, my first card game that I got into was Game of Thrones, the card game, the LCG, the first edition. And anyone who's followed the channel for any while knows that. I used to feature that game heavily on the channel uh, in second edition. But yeah. Yep, sad days. That game, that game's on its way out too. So many games, so many games are coming to an end here in 2020 that I love and I play, but I obviously I don't play them enough and don't put enough money into them or else they would stick around. <laughs> that's that's the truth. But there's always new games coming, always games to be designed and made. People are always looking for new stuff, so but uh yeah, it's kind of sad when you see stuff fall fall off the wagon. All right. So, uh I think I'm done my turn. I'm pretty sure did I buy my cards? No, I didn't buy my cards. So I had five resources total, right? Did I buy anything? No, I didn't buy anything. I'll take a Spectral Echo and I'll take another Jade. Or did I, did I advance that? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, sure, that's what I was doing. Uh, okay, let's go with my turn again. All right, I like this. Okay. Uh, well, let's deal two damage. Down to 64. Um, and one sec, let me destroy a card in hand. Uh, let's see what we got in hand here. I'll just destroy a crystal. All right, so we'll keep that. That's what I'm doing right now. So Alex is asking, what are your thoughts on Game of Thrones, the card game, second edition ending? I liked playing it, but it didn't take off over here. Do you reckon we'll get something like a third edition in the next few years? I, I, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what they're doing with the Game of Thrones license. After the HBO shows, show ended, right, I'm sure instantly everything with that license took a hit. Like nobody is going and buying... Like, people will buy the Blu-rays as they release for the full set. But after that, like, if it's not a show that's on and people are talking about, especially since that last season was kind of botched. I mean, I loved it, but, I mean, it could have been better. But a lot of people just kind of crapped on that show and it killed off the hype of it, right? They are going to do a prequel. Hopefully that has enough hype behind it. But if it doesn't, I mean, that Game of Thrones license will definitely, the money they make off that license definitely will drop. But the Game of Thrones, the card game player base, definitely dried up in my area. It got really shallow. And even going to Gen Con last year, there was like, what was it, like 30 or something players playing in the in the Continentals. I used to go and there'd be like 300 plus players. And it was an awesome time. But uh, my wife didn't want to play it. My friends didn't want to play it. I would have to go to the store and play with the same like one or two people over and over again if they showed up that week. So it just got not fun. And then when Keyforge... Keyforge was a shiny new thing where lots of people are playing it at lots of stores. I just want to go, I want to be able to play with lots of people and play the game. Um, but yeah, I, I'm sad it's ending, but I can see why. If like, if it's not being supported, then like, why would you continue to make cards for it and pay for that license and all that kind of stuff? So, and pay for the art and that kind of thing. I don't know if they'll reboot it. They'll only reboot it if there's a reason to and they probably only do it now if there's like if the next show kicks off maybe they'll re reskin it um or add to it when the next books come out maybe or like re-add to it if the next books come out but i i don't see from a business decision i think the days of ffg doing stuff that that just makes okay money is over now that they have new overlords that run that that place i don't think that's what's going to happen there anymore i think i think they've tasted the star wars money and they gotta they gotta go where the money's at, do the Disney properties and the money on the Star Wars stuff uh, and Marvel, right? We'll see though. We'll see where the future goes for that that company, that branch of Asmodee. But it's sad, sad stuff. It's not the same place it used to be, that's for sure. Okay, um, let's pop that in there. I won't fire off the spark, obviously. Let's do some. Uh, opening of this breach 
actually, I should open that first and then put this there for the extra plus one damage. Uh, then we get three resources. Which I will, I'll just buy a charge. I'll just buy a charge. Draw one, flip. Uh, okay, let's do the next one here. So it's me again. Let's deal three damage and I will destroy a Oh, let's destroy a spark. Let's destroy a spark from hand. Uh, we'll save this one here. Let's do the two damage. Let's not forget that. 62. Uh, let's throw this one here. So well prepped, once per turn you, in your main phase, you may return a gem you play this turn into your hand. So I'll play this to gain a charge. This is the first time you play a Cloud of Sapphire, you gain a charge. I get three resources. Return to hand. Let's fire this off. Heal four to myself. Go up to nine. I'll play this again. Get six resources, but not a second charge. And then throw another three resources down. So that's nine resources. Let's grab one of these. And for two more, let's just gain a charge. Yeah, I had some of my best times in gaming, meeting the best people playing uh, Game of Thrones 2nd Edition. I do miss it. Did you set up the turn order deck the way the rulebook says, or is it the variant you came up with? Uh, the rulebook says use three turn order cards for solo plus two nemesis, but then I learned later editions of the game they said for solo. Uh, you should, And also these guys let me know in the chat last time. I think it was Bernardo or somebody let me know last time, or, or Nightwish uh, told me... In new versions of Allen's and you're supposed to play with three turn order or four turn order cards for the player. And uh, even doing that, I still lose. <laughs> it doesn't make it that much easier. Uh, so it's two nemesis, four turn order cards. It's not a variant. Or it, maybe it is a solo variant, but it is uh, it was in later versions of Allen's End. That's what they do. But in the base set, they say only use three. And I didn't know any better until these guys let me know in the chat. Then I looked it up and yeah, it's a thing. Even in the app, it, it, it gives you the option to do four turn order cards or three when you're doing the random setup. Keyforge was a flash in the pan over here. First set sold out numerous times here. Second set sold a little bit and nothing since. Hardly anyone talking now playing it locally. I'm getting the vibe that that is happening. And if you look at the amount of decks being registered in the Keyforge app, it feels like it's slowed down in there. But I could be wrong. But it's like, like 1.6 million decks registered. And if you go look back at the articles when they pass a million decks, that wasn't that long ago, and it's definitely not going at the same speed. But again, they don't have to pay for a license for that one. I don't know how hard it is to design sets. A computer builds the decks, and they just got to print them and, and sell them. And I don't know how much work and how many employees are involved in that, but selling them still at 10 bucks a cost, like, there's people still buying cases every time a new set comes out. So, um and even when they go on sale, when the new set comes out and they start clearing out old sets, I still bet they're making money on those clearance prices on, on decks and people are buying them up. So I know people that are still playing it here in my area and they're still buying things by the cases. So, and I still see decent turnouts at the, um, at the vault tours, but we'll see when the money t tournaments start going, the vault warrior stuff, we'll see how that goes. But it's too bad. Alex, I think the players also need to be behind Keyforge to keep it going. And like I haven't been out since I left my job to do this full time. I haven't had the money to just travel to tournaments and stuff. I kind of kind of taken some time off of that. Um, but I'm not sure how it's going out there really. But it's cool that you can get players to play literally by just bringing your old decks or buying cheap decks and just handing them out to people and like teaching them. It's super low barrier entry. So that game could get another resurgence when lcgs don't lcgs just have a downward trend and they die that's that's just how it always is because they get too big to hold their own weight uh have you tried arkham horror lcg yet no i have not that is the one co cooperative lcg i've not tried but i do want to try that at some point i should get the core set at some point just to try it but i'm afraid 
because that's another lifestyle game and I can only do so many of those at one time. <laughs> okay, so let's do, here we go, wild. So it's me again, all right. Do I hold that there and double play a jade? Uh, that won't give me enough to buy this, but would give me enough to buy this. Hmm, I think I'm going to just keep trying to get these spells. So in that case, let's fire off this one for four damage. We'll go down to 58. We'll keep the spark there. Let's do spectral echo there. Very light there. Uh, let's do a focus for three or less. Uh, so I have four resources. So I'll spend one resource to focus this. That leaves me with three resources left. Let's do a bottled vortex. Uh, Arkham and Marvelous use my only money pits I have at the moment. Yeah, I try to keep it down to one money pit at a time. <laughs> that was the problem. I, I would always do one co-op LCG and then one competitive LCG at the same time. And man, yeah, the price, the cost, because the cooperative one, you're just buying stuff and playing it at home. But the, the competitive one, you pay for travel, tournament entry. You got to have the latest packs. You got to have sleeves to go to the tournaments. You got, you know, you're like, Jumping in the tournaments, getting new mats and stuff. You'll you'll buy any accessories that come out, deck boxes, all that stuff. It gets pricey. Hotels, convention entry, all that stuff to play in tournaments for competitive. So I can only have like two at a time. And I found that even hard to, to stay up on all the rules and all the sets coming out, all the meta. Then you start to forget about your board game shelf. So in this case, I've decided uh, in mid-2019 to say I'm focused on co-op LCG 1 and board game 1. So... Uh, it was Lord of the Rings LCG, but now it's become Marvel LCG for now. But we'll see. We'll see. Things can change very quickly. Oh, yeah. So let's do this now. Nemesis is coming twice in a row, I believe, now. Yep. Yep. Nemesis twice in a row. So let's see what we get from him. Uh, God Feeders. Okay. It's going to have eight. Persistent. Gravehold suffers three damage. Devour a gem from the most expensive gem pile. Okay. Can we get him out of play? Before anything bad happens. So eight health on that. Uh, next. No, he's going to do it. Gravehold suffers three damage. So down to 27. That's okay. Uh, devour a gem from the most expensive gem pile. Draw. Oh, another minion. Ouch. So nine health on this Venomite. Persistent, the player with the lowest life suffers two damage, or any player discards a prep spell that costs three or more. Nine. Ooh. So I need to get some damage flying fast if I want to stop those guys from hitting back. And that is good. Oh, Nemesis for the third time in a row. Gravehold suffers three damage. Down to 24. Devour the most expensive gem. Okay. Uh, the player with the lowest life suffers two damage or discards a prep spell of three or more. Uh, I'll take two damage. Down to seven. Okay. Oh, man. Minion City. Minion City. Needle Maw, Gravehold suffers 2 damage persis persistent on this guy. 11. Oh, boy. Please don't be this guy again. Nope. All right. It's me. All right. So we got some, some places to throw damage here. But I don't know how quickly I can get through that stuff. But uh, Gravehold's going to be getting hit by 5 damage a turn if I don't do something about that. So let's go after this guy first, I think. Okay, so we can do a total of three, four, five damage here. So let's do that. Let's destroy this one for three. We'll hit this guy first. 
Um, and I can destroy a card in hand. Let's get rid of a crystal. Got to get those spells more, more quickly flowing here. Uh, let's fire off a spark. It's a hit for one. Woo! And we'll fire off this one to hit for one. Down to three. That's not fast enough. So I get a resource off this. Let's throw that in there. Uh, let's do reduced for three. Let's open this one. So we'll reduce by three and spend the one off this. And then I have three more resources. Hmm. Maybe I get this one going. Loose charges. I don't know, but I might need to heal. So losing charges is not really what I want to do. Uh, let's go with, I'll just buy a charge actually. Let's just buy a charge. Yep. Okay, we got our breaches open so we can use those relics to fire off damage now, which is fine. All right, it's, it's me again. All right, so we'll do three damage. We'll destroy this guy, uh, which we can destroy a card in hand. Let's destroy a crystal. Uh, let's throw in Arcane Nexus here. Throw a Spectral Echo there. Let's play this one, gain a charge. I can return it to hand thanks to the Arcane Nexus. So that's three resources. Six, seven, eight. Let's get another arcane nexus going. And that one resource go to waste. That's fine. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Good luck, Broski. Don't forget your plus one. Should be down to two HP. Oh, did I forget that? Yeah, you're right. Oh, off that guy. Oh, okay. So he was down to three. I forget what I even did last. Let's see. Two damage. Ah, I would have killed him anyway. That's fine. That's fine. I forgot. That's okay. Uh, all right. This is... Nemesis. Okay, the player with the lowest life suffers two damage or any player discards a prep spell that costs three or more. Uh, I'll take two damage. The grave hold suffers two damage. Unleash twice, any player suffers two damage. Ooh, that's rough. Okay, then you get charges and healing ASAP. Uh, unleashing twice, so that is devouring, it is Devour three cards from the least expensive supply pile. So here or here. Let's do this one. Uh, or is four there? Five here. Am I okay with that one going? Yeah, let's do this one. So he'll take three. And then let's choose this one for three. Or do I do it the other way around? Let's do it the other way around. Because maybe we want to buy that spell. Maybe. I don't really know. I should have looked at my hand. <laughs> oh, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Uh, so he's done. Oh, I didn't suffer two damage. Did I? Did I? Did I? Did I? Oh, damn. Did I forget? Or did I not do it? I took two damage for sure. I think went down to five. And then two more for that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where I'm at. Let me know if I forgot to take damage there. Um, I've just gotten into this game, but I love how you can randomize the market and the minion decks for endless playability, depending on how much expansions you own. Yeah, no kidding. But that's almost like that with any deck builder, though. Um, but I do love the gameplay in this game. Uh, the not shuffling and the whole discard pile matters. I did. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Woo! Let me just uh, take a minute here. I should have done it in the order on the card so I don't forget. I did stuff out of order. That's what messes me up. Okay. It's my go. 
Okay, let's do three damage here. Destroy a card in hand. Let's destroy another crystal. Uh, do I fire this one off for four? I think so. Let's do four. Okay. Uh, now my turn. Let's throw this one in here. Let's destroy this one. Destroy up to two cards in my hand or discard pile. Ooh. Probably get rid of jades now. So let's destroy a jade. And let's destroy a yeah, let's destroy another jade. That's fine. And then we get to draw a card. Another jade. <laughs> uh, let's destroy this card to deal a damage. Is it him next or is it me? Oh, it's me next. Okay, good. Um, two resources. I think that's a charge for sure. Oh, and I can play it twice, right? So I can get another charge. Yes, 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 yes. Play it twice with Arcane Nexus. Love that card. This one's great. I don't think I've ever played with it before, but that's awesome. Maybe I have. I'm maybe in like um, casual play, not on the not on the channel. I think I have. Seems like a familiar effect, but I could be getting that confused with something else. Uh, need to be careful. Uh... Need to be careful when mixing different waves as they're balanced different from minions, attack power, nemesis card types. Oh, okay. It's very heated discussion on how to balance different waves. <laughs> yeah, because I can see with certain cards they work better in the sets because they're obviously designed together and play tested as a set. Because you're not going to spend that much time and money play testing your whole library of cards, right? But yeah, that makes sense. Oh, your last mission ends. You're playing playing Arkham Horror LCG right now with a four-player campaign. I love campaign anything. I love playing campaigns, especially with the same group of people. Going through a long campaign, I love that stuff. That's my favorite way to play games, I think. But that is awesome that you're playing that. Yeah, if I had a, a consistent group for that, that would be awesome. But yeah, that's, that's wicked. I'm a little jealous. That's awesome. Okay. So, uh, next, it's me. Uh, let's do, do we just do a little overkill for five damage on this guy, but we have a way to deal him one damage right here. So that's fine. So let's just fire this off and we'll do five damage to this guy. Okay. Let's do this here. This here, this here. Uh, let's destroy this to do one damage here. And a jade for two. Oh, I forgot about my, <laughs> forgot about my ability last turn. <laughs> so I'll definitely fire that off and I'll use this jade just to give me another spark. Uh, and that will heal me four up to seven. So let's do a six there and a one here. That feels better. And we'll get two cards, flip the deck. One, two, three. Nice small deck, feels good. Let's get some more big spells in there and we'll be killing this. Okay, unless he devours the board, which could happen. All right. Ram is so good in solo. Was it you, Knight, that recommended it last time and then we changed up because people are like, let the gods decide? <laughs> uh, I get asked every time, Jay, Grishoff, I'm saying that right? Uh, do you have Legacy or New Age? My son and I completed both campaigns. I like both in different ways. I do not. I would have started with Legacy or New Age if my local retailer had them in stock over the holidays. Uh, when I was picking what games I wanted to get myself over the holidays, aka my wife get me. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Um, but this was the only one in stock and I wanted to try Aeon's End really bad. So I just picked the base set because people were telling me you could start anywhere. But no one mentioned War Eternal. Everyone said start with base set, legacy, or new age. More people said new age. Um, but it wasn't in stock, so I couldn't get it. It's still not in stock. I'm waiting for it to be in stock to order it. So no, I don't have either, but I'm excited to play them. And it seems like you guys on the channel like it enough 
uh, enough views and likes are happening on these videos um, that I, I might as well keep playing playing it. So I'm looking forward to getting more of it. And any boards and cards, if you're watching, feel free to send some stuff for review copy. <laughs> All right. Uh, War Eternal is the hardest. Is there anything about War Eternal people don't like that they won't get it or play it? That one seems in stock always. What is what is the downside to that version? Why is nobody talking about War Eternal? That's what I want to know. But I get the vibe like it's not the best set or one of the best sets at all for some reason. I don't know. All are good. Oh, he owns a full set. That was me, but Brown was kind of cheating. War Eternal is better than base in my opinion. Oh, really? I'm down to support your channel for my end's content. <laughs> So you guys need to email any boards and cards. Tell them to send me over more stuff too. <laughs> uh, well, they didn't send me anything yet, but it'd be nice if they did. Uh, we'll, we'll work on that. And I'll be able to get more stuff faster. Uh, but you guys can donate to Patreon. Join the Patreon down below. That, would, that will help get games to the channel faster because all that money goes right back into uh, to buying more games. Maybe I should do an Aeon's End um, fundraiser like I did for Too Many Bones to get a Too Many Bones expansion. Maybe I'll do an Aeon's End uh, New Age or Legacy, try to raise money that way so I can get it quicker. Uh, I love War Eternal personally. Really? I, I, I don't know anything about War Eternal, but I, I just thought, like, I don't see it talked about at all when I was, like, getting into the community and stuff. Um, but anyways, what do we get? It's me. Okay, let's see here. This guy needs six to die. We definitely can do six. So let's do that. Three here, two here, one here. And we get to destroy a card in hand. We get to gain an extra resource. So let's destroy a crystal. Uh, let's throw this here. This here. So I have one resource. I can play this for a charge. Bounce it back to hand. So that's four resources, seven, eight, nine. Let's grab another one of these and another charge. Yep. All right, feels good, feels good. I uh, need my five cards first. Uh, five, two, okay. Uh, let's, do I want to destroy the cards in the hand? Yeah, I do, sure. So I'll deal three damage, uh, down to 55. I will destroy this jade in my hand. Let's fire off this one for another five damage, down to 50. Let's line up this, let's line up this and this. And two resources, I'll gain another charge. Flip. One, two, three, four, five. It's me again. Uh, let's fire off this for three. Down to 47. And I will... Mm, yeah, I'll destroy my starter spell here. That's fine. Uh, let's fire off both of these. For five plus four is nine more. So we'll go down to 38. Wrong way, wrong way. 38. To your original question, when did we start in board games? My first was pandemic. In a trip with my wife, we went to a bar. And in the middle of a random conversation, somebody said they bought a game and loved it. We were in an all-inclusive, which literally nothing to do. So we decided to order it. You mentioned that it was wife friendly. We loved it. Oh, that is a cool story, Bernardo. That is cool. I, I first time I played Pandemic was with my wife on a camping trip. I bought it. It was sitting on the shelf of shame for a bit because I heard so many good things, and I packed it in our camping gear. And one day it was kind of rainy. We had nothing to do, so we I put up a kitchen tent and we played it on a picnic table uh, outside. So it was like raining all around us, and but we were, had like the tarp thingy over top of us, like a kitchen tent or whatever it's called. Uh, with a mesh screen to keep the bugs out. And we just sat there playing Pandemic on a wooden picnic table outside uh, a campground. It was super cool. 
Uh, that's my memories of the pandemic, but that's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> Sai, yes, he played it for the first time camping too. A canopy, okay. Yeah, sometimes they call them kitchen tents. I don't know why. I guess you can eat under them, sort of like a kitchen. I don't know. That's what they call them here, I think, uh, in Canada uh, when you buy them. But a canopy, yes. It is a canopy. That's what it is. Uh, War Eternal, they definitely got inspiration from the hollow crown boss artwork for Magic the Gathering. Looks exactly like the Elish Norn. I'll know more what you mean when I ever get War Eternal. <laughs> I'm sure people in the chat know what you're talking about. Okay, so I got my turn to play here. Okay, right, right, yeah, let's throw that. No, let's throw that one there. And then we'll bounce the Clouded Sapphire using the Nexus. We'll heal, we'll go just up to our max 10. Okay. And then we'll play this again. So that is six resources. Let's grab a planar insight. One, two, three, four, five, all right, we're singing now, we're singing. Okay, Nemesis, oh, another minion, another minion, but that is okay. This guy has seven health on him. He devours, on a persistent, will devour cards equal to this minion's life from one supply. Then this minion suffers two damage. Okay, that's cool, but I still want you dead. And Nemesis again. So devour cards equal to his life. So seven cards from one supply. Well, I gotta do one that I've not bought anything from really, right? Or that you can. Four from here, maybe? Yeah, let's do the Searing Ruby. So four from there. And the seven that are missing. Oh, it says only Gravehold will suffer damage. Uh, when he would devour a card from the supply that has empty, uh, when it's empty, Gravehold suffer two damage per card. But I don't think this guy does that. So he'll just take that whole pile. So maybe I don't do that? I don't care. That one's fine. That one's fine. Although, because I can pick any pile. I'll do this pile. <laughs> Unless you guys tell me otherwise. <laughs> Am I cheating? Uh... <laughs> it's mac and cheese, not craft dinner. <laughs> it's KD, that's all I know it as. It's craft dinner, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, eh? Uh... <laughs> And Bernardo's talking about his pandemic. <clears throat> he played it like five times wrong, lost badly, misread the rules. I thought you could only cure diseases in the research station. Build a city of the same color. In the oh, yeah. I could see that. I could see that. Um, yeah, because you play and you got your wife there. You want to just read through the rules quick. You just go. Oh, size mom is Canadian. All right. It's all good. It's all good. So she's cool then. I'll get it. I get it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right. Uh, so Nemesis did this, uh, and he suffers two damage after doing that. And then we draw another card, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, Mind Guzzler. Uh, so we set up this minion's life equal to eight plus the number of empty supply piles. And then he unleashes. Okay. So it's eight plus three. So we need to set up 11. <laughs> and he's just going to make Unleash happen. So he's bad. But maybe I can beat this guy's 38 before this all matters. Uh, we'll see though. And it's me. Surprise. Uh, okay. So if we get rid of this guy, he won't be devouring cards. This guy does card devouring. It's a total of 11 plus 5 is 16. Here I can do... Four, three is seven, eight, nine, nine. Yeah, let's just do it here. So um, let's do the five from these two. 
And let's see if I can destroy a card in my hand. Yeah, let's toss a jade, that's fine. Um, and that will do the five to get rid of this guy. And we're still, are we still in level two cards? Yes, we are. We're still in level two cards. Maybe going to tier three soon. Um, let's see. So this one could do four. Yeah, let's do four damage. Uh, I'll throw this down to a one. Okay, and let's throw... And two, I can bounce it to make four. And we'll just do You know what? Let's throw some ch a charge. Two charges. We'll do two charges. Flip. Yeah, I feel like we got this. But I don't know. Nemesis. All right. Uh, this guy's going to unleash. So three cards from the lowest cost. So it's either from here, which you'd be getting to. Oh, there's two in each one of these. Yeah, we don't need these anymore. Let's get rid of that. He'll do two to grave hold because there's one card missing from his devouring. Uh, power we got here uh, is reality rupture. To discard, destroy two prep spells that cost three or more, and at power one, he'll unleash three times. Yeah, that can't happen. But it could. He just has to go again. Uh, okay, please don't go again. Okay, it's us. All right, we got to do this. Destroy two prep spells that each cost three or more. Um, hmm. But I can't do that yet. So, But if I leave something there to destroy it, I'll destroy these two, right? That should be fine, but I probably want to get rid of this guy though too. Oh, I have another one I can destroy. Okay, so let's do um, three damage. And then we'll do four damage. I won't destroy a card in hand, that's fine. Um, and that will finish him off. And then on my turn, let's prep this here. Uh, I'll destroy these two to get rid of this. And then let's line them up. Clouded Sapphire for a charge. I'll bounce it back for six total. Let's get a planar insight going. And draw. And it's me. All right. So let's just pound the boss. Let's just pound him. Uh, so this will do four total. Down to 34. This will do five. Down to 29. And another four. Down to 25. Uh, let's see here. And let's go dropping this here, this here, that there, and that there. And a jade, which will bounce twice. That'll give us four resources. Let's just go. I should grab one of these Phoenix Flames. Instead of charges. Maybe I'll start burning charges. Since I'm at full health, I'll try that. Try that angle. Nemesis. So I have to spend some resources to get rid of this one with power one. The player with the most charges suffers four damage and loses all their charges. Okay, well, I shouldn't spend on charges then. And it's me. So, yeah, let's just continue the pain train. So two, probably should be doing this in a different order. <laughs> Three more down to 20. 
Destroy a card in hand, maybe? Mm, nope, okay. Um, and then let's do eight more. So down to 12. And this, I gotta spend seven. Oh, which might be tough. The way I've, the way I've angled my deck here. Uh, but that's okay. That is okay. Has he gone twice already? Yes, he has. So there is a chance I could do it. I just have to leave one of these here. Maybe leave some spells here. Try to draw on a Clouded Sapphire and and one other resource card. But I, I don't even know if I have any other resource cards. <laughs> Oh, man. So I'll bounce this, gain a charge. So that's six. Let's just grab a Clouded Sapphire. Maybe that'll help us get there. Maybe we get lucky and I see it quick enough because, I mean, I only have a couple cards in deck, so... Yep. Because there's the right there. They're right there. So if I get lucky and I get to go before he goes again. So it is me now, right? Oh, but I can probably just destroy and win right now. So this would be four, eight. Yeah. Four, eight, twelve. Boss is dead. So let's see what the chat's saying here. What are you guys talking about here? The new age. Uh, talking about... War Eternal, isn't it New Age, unsure. Oh, you guys are just talking about playing War Eternal, but now you think it might be New Age, I get it. <laughs> I'm sure once you have so much of this game, you get confused with what mages are and what boxes, that's for sure. I couldn't tell you the name of any of these mages, or what. I just kind of like some of their abilities, but I haven't played that much, but. Okay, so we're gonna clean it up again. Let's try a new mage though. Uh. I guess we'll just do a whole new setup. Might as well. But I want to still play this guy. Uh, should we just leave his deck the same? I mean, could it get much different? I didn't... Oh, I did get to tier 3. But all the 3s are the same, right? So I'll shuffle those up. Maybe I'll just switch up the tier 2 and tier 1 stuff. Basic, basic, basic. Prince, Prince. Okay, so I need a new number 1 basic. So let's just do that now. Here, let me just shuffle his level 3. Okay. Uh, and basic nemesis. Uh, let's do the level two stuff first. Which is right here. So what do we need? We need three level two cards. One, two, three. Okay, and then a level, we'll throw that on top. Level one is basic. Okay. And that we'll throw in back in here. And here's his level one. Yeah, I, I should go to the one on the setup uh, on the website, especially since I'm live now and you guys can see it. Aeons and randomizer. Oh, well, I should try a different one of these too. Yeah, look at the digital app. I haven't played the digital version of this yet, but I, I do want to. At some point, I will play it on the channel.
Okay. Star card. Quadded Sapphire. Jade. my spell. G spectral echo. Fun times, fun times. Okay. So can I the only problem is on this app I can't pick pick my player. But for the mages, let's just pick one that I don't think I've played before. Uh Lash. I don't know. Is there a mage from the course that you guys want to see that I haven't played? I just don't want to play this guy. He played him last time. Wasn't the greatest. Uh, so I won't play Brahma or him. And let me get this out of the way. So let me know what you guys think. What do you want to see? What do you want to see? Let me know while I clean up. You guys can pick. Uh, okay. So let's just throw some spells. Okay. Let's do the rando setup here, actually. Uh, we'll do this one. Oh, I forgot to select my expansions. Oh, fail, fail. This one. <laughs> Still don't see New Age there. Or am I just blind? Yeah, looks like they've been lazy. Uh, or maybe you're not supposed to mix it. I don't know. Is that good? Did I click this? Oh, there we go. Those are some expensive gems. Okay, Cloud of Sapphire staying. So is Searing Ruby. That's fine, that's fine. Quicker setup, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fine. So no jades. Searing Ruby, no, I already have that. Diamond Cluster is what I'm missing. Okay, gems done. Relics, Blasting Staff, Unstable Prism. Blasting Staff, Unstable Prism. Spells, what do we need for spells? Phoenix Flame, had that one already. That's fine. Spectral Echo. Did we just have that one? Yes, we did. Oh, I like that one. I like this randomizer today. Uh, Dark Fire and Consuming Void. I, I don't think I've played with either of those. Let me read. Oh, maybe I've seen this one, but I haven't really got it going yet. But that is a cool card. And what's the other one? It's Destroy. Consuming Void. Cast. Destroy up to two cards in hand. Deal three damage for each card destroyed this way. And I love the destroy stuff. Dark Fire. Discard up to two cards in hand. Deal three damage for each card discarded this way. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's get us all set up here. So most expensive, seven spell, five, and a three. Okay, what are we picking? What are we picking? 
Let's see here. Who's got who's got the most votes? If there's even any votes. Who's the weirdest one? Relic girl, Kadir. Phaedraxa? I think it's worth it only for the promo mage. That's not even available. Uh, XAE? There's one deck dungeon. Void is best. Seven will be easy. Ah, uh, true. Yeah, the diamond cluster. That could help. Yeah, yeah. And Cloud is Sapphire. Okay. So I saw you guys say Phaedraxa and Kadir. Yeah, side combo, sorry. No, it's all good. I'm like scanning looking for names in there. I thought you guys were maybe like arguing on which one's better, but I know what you mean. <laughs> I'm confused. All right, so it's down to these two. Uh, so what, who's... I vote Rob voices them in character. <laughs> I'm looking at them. I don't even know how to voice these two. She's like, she's like polite, kind, and nice looking at her face. And this one's kind of like, I'm a little evil. I don't know. I'm not going to try that, though. I'll lose my voice trying to make a girl's voice for like the next hour. Kadir, Kadir double, can double prep spells. Okay, Kadir it is. Let's go. Or Kadir, Kadir, Kadir. Uh, let's see. That player may return up to three spells in their discard pile to their hand. That player may prep up to two spells to each of their open breaches this turn. Wow. Me likey. <laughs> Shannon, perfect. <laughs> that, that was good. You like that? <laughs> So we're picking the soft voice one, I think, because you guys don't want to hear me talk like uh, this one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do it. I'll be horrible. I'll see the viewership, just like the numbers will just drop. <laughs> okay, so starter cards. We need an emerald shard. Let's go find the emerald shard. Uh, let's see here. Emerald shard. Where do we got this in here? Somewhere in here in these starter cards. I should probably keep those separate. There it is. Emerald Star, we can put that one back. And what do we need? Three crystals and a spark in hand, too. And in the deck, three crystals, two sparks. Uh, so we need another spark. And two sparks go on the bottom of the deck. Three crystals on top. This one can go back. And breaches. Let's go to that one here. This one here. Okay, so let me fully get the ability here. So if I activate this for five, five charges, I can return up to three spells from my discard pile. They come to my hand. I also may be able to prep two spells per thing this turn, which would make sense if I'm returning that many to hand. I might not have any spots for them. That makes sense. Okay, I like that ability. That's cool. I can't cheaply heal, so I might just burn out and die this turn. Uh, Fedrextra's ability was, as Alex is curious what their abilities were, uh, activate immediately after the turn order card is drawn. I can prevent any damage that the players or grave hold would suffer during that turn. So that's pretty big. That's pretty big too. Uh, that's a lot safer, I think, than this, but this could get heavy damage lane, uh, real quick. So let's set 30 here. We got 70 health here. Shuffle the turn order deck. We've done this deck. Oh yeah, let's build the uh, Prince of Gluttons little devour pile here. So he's going to gobble one off each of these, starting with the six on the bottom, I'm pretty sure. And then we can choose. Let's, yeah, let's throw this one. Okay. Uh, so we got cards. Health. Health is important. Let's go five and five. Ten health. Uh, Kadir sounds awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to try this. This sounds cool. I just need to get some of these breaches open, and I don't have that card that helps me right now. No relic helps me open my breaches. So let's see what we have here. So we've got Diamond Cluster for four. I can gain two resources. If the second time you play Diamond Cluster this turn, you gain an additional two resources. Searing Ruby, we saw it in the last game. Uh, basically an extra resource 
for, towards a spell, but it gains you two by default for four cost. Cloud of Sapphire, I love this one. For six cost, gain three resources. And if it's the first time you played Cloud of Sapphire, uh, any ally gains a charge. That's a great. Uh, Unstable Prism is a relic. Play a gem in hand twice and destroy it. Oh, I've had this one before. I like that one. Or gain two resources. So this could act like a gem. Blasting Staff. You may cast a prep spell that you prep this turn. If you do, that spell deals two additional damage. I like that a lot. Phoenix Flame, we had it last game for three. Uh, deal two damage. You may lose a charge to deal two additional damage. Not really a fan of that one. But, I mean, if your ability sucks. I would have loved to have that with this guy that was had his crappy ability last time. Like, that would have been great on his play. Because I never use this ability. And uh, I had charges. So it would have been cool to use charges that way. Uh, Spectral Echo, deal two damage. You may destroy a card in hand. We had that one just a minute ago. Dark Fire, for five on this spell, we can discard up to two cards in hand, deal three damage for each card. Discard this way for seven, Consuming Void. Destroy up to two cards in hand, deal three damage for each card destroyed this way. Yum, yum, yum. Okay. Let's see who's first. And suggest so you're off. Good evening. How's it going? All right, Nemesis is first. Devour two cards from the second most expensive gem pile. And any player suffers two damage. I'm going to devour. Let's do diamond cluster. And two damage lost. All right, my turn. So what does her Emerald Shard do? Gains me a life or any player gains, or sorry, gains me a resource or any player gains a life. So a little bit of healing there, that's nice. <laughs> Bernardo doesn't like this ability, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, <laughs> situational. Yeah, that's true, I can see that. But you have to build your deck around it, right? You have to make sure you have tons of spells. You don't thin your deck out too much because you want to have spells sitting there for a while. So having a bigger deck, I think, with her is better. So that might be a trouble when I'm going to be excited to get rid of cards through this Consuming Void, if I can get it going. Okay, so let's pop this here. I will gain four resources. I'll take a Diamond Cluster, I think. Yeah, let's take a Diamond Cluster. And draw five. My turn again. Keep the spark there. Uh, for three resources, I'll open this one. And I'll hold the spark. Or wait, did I have that? No, I will fire this off. Yeah, yeah, let's fire that off so I can put this here. I don't want to hold it. Yeah, that was dumb. And those will go there. Flip. One, two, three, four, five. It's me again. Keep those there. All right. So I get a total of six resources if I play it that way, or I can do five resources and gain a life. Well, let's do all six. We're gonna gain this guy. Uh, what will I get four next turn? What did I start with in hand? Three crystals. Yeah, I could grab it. Uh, okay, so I'll leave Diamond Cluster there, I think. Four, flip. So that's six again. It's me. So... 
six resources again. I'll play this for three. I'll get a charge. Three more for six. Let's just grab another clouded sapphire. The spark. Probably should have fired one of these off. I'll just hold it. That's fine. One, two, three, four. Nemesis. Any player suffers two damage or devour th three spells from any spell pile. You can have three Searing Rubies. You know what? You can just take them. Let's see here. I personally do not like her ability. Uh, oh, you already said that. All I need is one or two properties of their ability and monster toast. Buy a second diamond spell pile. Yeah, I do should get the second diamond cluster going. Um, okay. All right. Um, so let's fire off one of these. 68. Scroll the next one down. Uh, so I can get four resources. Well, let's get the second diamond. And okay. I'll leave the sparks there. We get some bigger spells going. Let's try to open some breaches. Uh, okay. So maybe if I can get the second diamond here. So can I open breaches and buy a diamond, I think. So I'll play this for three. I'll gain a charge. Um, and then for one more, that'll get me diamond cluster. And then I have three more, five, six more. Wow. Uh, one away from getting this guy. But what I'll do let's do. I'll take one Spectral Echo, and then for this, I'll focus that one there. No, let's just focus it twice. Let's get, get it going. Let me get serious here. I just need to get to the sevens to start firing those off, but to get to that, I should maybe have done that. Yeah, let's redo. Let's, let's undo that. We'll just go one focus. We'll get a Spectral Echo in there. That'll help thin my deck to get more money together to condense to start getting these jammed in the deck i need to get certain spells in there now okay so uh we know there's a diamond cluster there so let's put diamond cluster in the deck put a sapphire then put two of these in that one two three four five it's me again uh so we'll leave those sparks there i think I mean, we could open for five. Are we going to get spells yet? Okay, so if I do that, let's see. Could be one resource, three, four, five, which will just open this. Yes, let's just do that. 
Let's open this one for five. Throw this one down. And let's do diamond cluster. That, that. Two cards. One, two, three. Okay. There's the two diamond clusters together, finally. <laughs> and it's Nemesis' turn. All right. Oh, we got the Tough Biter. He's back. Any player suffers two damage or devour two relics from the least expensive relic supply pile. Boom. Okay. Nemesis. All right. I could suffer two damage or devour two relics from the least expensive relic supply pile. Yeah, that's fine. You can devour them. All right. My turn. Uh, okay. Let's fire on him for two. Three. Uh, so he's down to three. Where am I? What am I doing? Sure. Let's do another one. And let's throw this here. Although that's a little inefficient. We'll leave it open. Because we're just going to do two to him, most likely. Most likely. All right. So diamond cluster for two. This is the second one. So another two. So six, seven, eight. Yes, yes. Destroy up to two cards in hand. Deal three damage for each destroy this way. We'll just get one of those. I don't know how many we should actually throw in our deck of that one. Because that kind of... That could get crazy. But we'll just do one in our deck. I don't think I want to load my deck more with that. Yeah, I probably should focus on like Dark Fire and Spectral Echo. But this is going to be a little messy. A little messy. Okay, we'll see. Keep those Diamond Clusters together. Yeah, it's a totally different feeling of a game based on the different market and stuff. This is cool. I forgot to flip a Nemesis card. Oh, shoot. Thank you. Uh, two discard. Destroy a uh, card in hand that costs two or more. Probably should have. No, that's fine. That's fine. All right. And then power two. Unleash any player. Discard three cards in hand, then draws one. Oh, that's a bad one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Shuffle up. Oh. Thanks, Alex. You're getting Aether Swamped. Yeah, I know. I, as I haven't bought spells yet, I, I went heavy on the, the economy at the start. Because the spells didn't look too appealing. I need to get Blasting Staffs in there, too. That will help. I think these lower damage ones with the Blasting Staffs will be what I, I want to do, ultimately. Nemesis again. Okay. Devour two Relics. Or I suffer two damage. Let's do the two relics. Unstable prisms. And a power off of here. Oh, forgot to draw a card. Almost did it again. Uh, God feeders. Grave holds suffer three damage. Devour a gem from the most expensive gem pile. Eight health on these guys. All right. So let's just destroy this, or cast that, deal two damage, get rid of this guy. I can destroy a card in hand. Yeah, I think we're good to destroy a crystal. <laughs> so destroy a card in hand that costs two or more. I mean, the clouded sapphires, they're great for economy, but I don't think I need to be going up to sevens. And it only gives me charge as if it's by itself. Seems super weird. But it is big money. Big money, big money. Yeah, you know what? See a diamond cluster. This one's gone. And we have just this guy with eight. Uh, so... Play this, gain a charge. Second one doesn't give me a charge, but I'm at seven resources. Oh, man. Let's go Blasting Staff. And... 
Dark Fire? I don't know. This is going to be weird trying to do her whole ability thing with these spells. <laughs> probably work on this Breach, actually. Probably would have been better, but I need spells coming out anyway. I have three, three Breaches that are doing nothing here. Uh, so this is probably not going to go well. All right, here we go. Nothing to fire off. Blech. Spark, spark. Uh, let's so three resources. Not even enough to get me focusing. But you know what I'll do? Let's just do two resources, I think, which will gain me a charge. And let's do her ability on this card to gain a life. Nemesis, Gravehold suffers three damage, 27. Uh, and Devour a gem from the most expensive gem pile. No! Uh, draw a card. Unleash twice, and Gravehold suffers three damage. Or, place the most recently discarded Nemesis card in the Nemesis discard pile back into play, which would have been, oh, it's wrong, discard pile. A tough biter. Yeah, we'll throw Tough Fighter back into play. All right, here we go. I guess we'll fire off three damage. And let's do it here. Swing Void. All right, we've got the Diamond Cluster, a little combo here. So six, seven total. Let's just open this one for seven. Got to get that extra damage going, I think. Probably should go spells, though, but... Okay, all my breaches are open. And here we go. So destroy up to two cards in hand. So I can do a crystal. And that's pretty much all I'm gonna do. Uh, so I will fire this still. So three damage, four damage total. And then we'll do this one for the fifth damage. Let's get rid of this guy. Okay, Spectral Echo, Dark Fate. Yeah, maybe I'll just use her charges just to fuel this Phoenix Flame. Maybe I should go that route. Uh, all right, so let's play this Sapphire for three. I can get a charge, so I'm full up. I can use my ability. Would that be good? Player may return up to three spells to their hand. So I can get three sparks back and line them up. <laughs> that doesn't seem too great. But what else am I doing with it? Let's do it for fun. Oh, I got a Consuming Void in there, actually. Oh, shoot. I just pulled them all out of my freaking... Oh, I just rearranged the pile. No. All right. I think that's good. Yeah, because I can pull out this, this, and this. That's fine. That doesn't change it too much. I think that's accurate. Okay. Uh, so these will come to hand. And let's throw this here, this here. Actually, let's do it this way. Two per. So let's go like this. That seems like a better play, right? Okay. Now I have this blasting staff. So obviously I'm not going to fire off the discard. Oh, discard up to two cards in hand. Three damage for each discarded this way. Oh, okay. I know what to do. Let's not prep this one. Let's not prep this one. Let's use Blasting Staff on the discard up to two cards in hand. Uh, 
and I'll discard these two. And I deal six damage plus one is seven. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We'll just do it on this guy and get rid of him. Okay, and three resources. Oh yeah, these should all be cleared. Three resources. Let's get a Phoenix Flame going. I can't tell if this game is fun. <laughs> Sorry, Shannon, I'm, I'm too into it to have fun. This is all serious business now. The challenge of the glutton prince over here, prince of gluttons, is serious business. But yes, it is super fun. If you like deck building games, I love how you don't shuffle in this, but it's like other deck building games, except for you gotta manage your little spells here and you, your discard pile order matters because you just flip your deck and you don't shuffle. I love it. Serious business. The internet is serious business. <laughs> okay. I'm sure it's more fun co-op too uh, than watching me play by myself, but uh, I played with my daughter once, but she wasn't really a fan. Probably because she didn't want to play with me and we forced her to play with me and my wife. <laughs> All right, so let's see again. Okay, so we got some spells lined up this time and we got some cards to destroy into hand. All right, let's pound the boss. Let's give our first hits in here. So we'll fire this one off. We'll destroy up to two cards in hand. Let's get rid of these two crystals. We'll deal up to three damage, so that's seven total. Uh, down to 61, okay. And this one, deal three damage. Uh, so down to 58. And we can destroy a card in hand if we want to. We'll destroy this crystal. Uh, so we have this, we can gain a, a uh, spark. Nope, charge, charge off this one. Um, could have four resources or I could heal one more and just have three. I'll take the four. No, let's just do three and a heal. We'll do Phoenix Flame and yeah, we'll heal here. So we're at full health because those charges from the Sapphire work great with the Phoenix Flame, I think. If I'm not going to do her ability again. But I mean, that could be huge later. We'll see. Okay. It's me again. Alright, we got the diamond cluster combo of six, seven. Let's do the clouded sapphire again one more time. Get some charges going and we'll put it in so it is further away from the last one, hopefully. Five more cards. Nemesis. Oh, we got the Mind Guzzler back here. Uh, set this minion's life equal to eight plus the number of empty supply piles. Oh yeah, I'm doing better this game on that resort or, or respect uh, because he was only going to get eight health. But immediately set his... Oh, he unleashes his thing, which I don't want to happen. In that case, I can discard up to two cards from hand. So let's discard these two uh, sparks. And that's firing this one off. Oh, I have to do it in this order. I put it in the discard pile. I do its ability. Uh, discard up to two cards in hand. Deal three each this way. So that is seven total on this guy. We'll put him one away. And then I'll just fire off this spark, do two damage, but it'll kill this guy. Okay. Phoenix Flame. Uh, which I will prep. And then I'll fire off with Blasting Staff. Deal two damage plus one. And then I can lose a charge to deal an additional two. So five total damage. Down to 53 on the boss. And a Clouded Sapphire which will gain me a charge, convenient, um, and three resources. Let's get another Phoenix Flame going. Flip the deck. I think that having four turns per two Nemesis might reduce the game difficulty. Yeah, I thought that. 
But I, it was weird. I played with only three turn order cards in the one stream we did, and I won. And then you guys told me about the four cards, so I did it, and then I lost. So I don't know. <laughs> but other things changed, too. I, I'm just joking. I don't think it really... It does make it easier, though. Of course it would. You get to go more times in, in overall in the game. And more more space between Nemesis turns is more likely, I think. I think, but... Uh, all right. All right, I got nothing to fire off here. Uh, let's do... Consuming Void, Phoenix Flame, Spectral Echo, and I can gain a charge for playing Sapphire. So four resources. Let's get another Flame in there, I guess. Uh, draw five. Nemesis, Needle Maw for 11. He's the one that suffers, Gravefold suffers damage. Let's see what I'm doing. I'm ignoring the whole, um, I'm fighting these minions over and over again. I'm ignoring the boss, but uh, if I keep just fighting minions over and over again, I'm eventually going to hit the level three cards and that's when it just can get out of control if I don't kill the boss before that. But we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so that was Nemesis. But I'm also keeping those effects under control, so it's like, been seems easier right now, but Nemesis again, Gravehold suffers too. Down to 25. Power one. Oh, this one I haven't seen in a bit. Power one. If this goes off, Gravehold suffers 18 damage. The players may collectively discard up to six gems. For each gem discarded this way, prevent three of that damage. That uh, could be trouble. <laughs> Not the nemesis. Okay. Oh, there's no way for me to get rid of that power. <laughs> so I got to like hold gems in hand on purpose. So I have like five gems in hand. I mean, that's a cool thing. All right. So let's see here. Might as well destroy some gems in hand, right? <laughs> Yeah, what am I going to do? I got to hold gems. I think I'm going to just hold gems. Okay. Yeah, let's leave Consuming Void there. I think. So let's do this. Let's deal three damage. And then I can do a charge for two more. This one, deal two. And I can destroy a card in hand if I want, but I don't think I'm, I might keep that just for that. Or I could do it for this one. Yeah, I'll keep it in hand. I'll destroy it for consuming void. Uh, so I'll destroy it to deal three damage plus the one for the open breach. Gets rid of the needle maw. At least that'll help grave hold a bit. And I'll hold three in here, which can prevent so I could prevent nine of the 18 right now by holding these. Oh, let's put dark fire in there. And yeah, I'll just hold the rest and draw two. Not a, sp not a, no, not, not gems. Okay, well, we might still have time. Oh, we don't. Nemesis. So Gravehold will suffer nine damage because I'll discard three to prevent nine of it. Oh, let me keep them in the right order. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so we prevent nine, so we'll take nine damage, uh, which will bring it down to 16. Things just got real. Things just got real. <laughs> uh, so that's my hand <laughs> for my next turn, which is now. Discard up to two cards in hand, deal three damage each dealt that way. Yeah, I'll discard these sparks. Uh, so there's a total of seven damage off of here. Uh, which will bring me down to 46. And we draw. One, two, three, four, five. My turn. Phoenix Flame, Phoenix Flame, Spark. 
Uh, let's Blasting Staff. Uh, we'll fire off this spell for five total because we'll spend a charge. We'll go down to 41. Um, and we gain another charge because we're playing a Clouded Sapphire. Way. Oh, three resources also. Sorry. Don't want to do that yet. Three resources. Let's do. Blast Phoenix Flame. One, two, three, four, five. And here we go. All right. So let's deal. Five total damage because we'll spend a spark. Six total damage. So let's go down to 35. Okay. Uh, Phoenix Flame. Phoenix Flame. Spectral Echo. Let's gain a charge. Four resources. Let's just gain two charges. Since we're going to need them for those Phoenix Flames. <laughs> uh, yes. One, two, three, four, five. Let's shuffle it up. Oh, did I forget another Nemesis card? Probably. Devour cards equal minions like Okay, so he's sitting out there. I totally goofed, so my punishment is I didn't get to fight him. I fought the boss instead. So this guy's devour cards equal to the minion's life from the supply pile. Then this minion suffers two damage. From one supply pile. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to go a little fast and playing too loose here. All right, so... I could just destroy that, oh, but I like keeping that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so this guy is seven. I can do five from here, two from here. Okay, so let's fire this off, spend a charge to do five, plus another two more. We'll get rid of this guy. We can destroy a card in hand, but we're not going to. We're going to put this here. We're going to hold the spark in hand, actually. We'll destroy it with that, I think. Uh, so we get six from the two diamond clusters, plus this. Gain a spark, or a charge, 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 charge. Six, nine resources. Let's do four for the charges. Uh, let's do five to buy a dark fire. Let's fire off her ability. Return three spells to hand. One, two, three. And then let's put this here, this here, this here, and we'll hold this one. Okay. One, two, three, four. And look at this. Spell City. All right. Let's see what goes next. It's me. All right. There will probably have to be a new Aeons and Kickstarter in a month or two. They've been play testing new stuff since September, I think. Ooh, ooh, behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. It makes sense because New Age is the last thing that came out, right? And that was like released last Gen Con. So either they do, a, they'll probably do a Kickstarter soon, I would think, to then have something maybe ready to release at Gen Con. 
or maybe there won't be a Kickstarter. Maybe they'll just release it at retail and pop pop it out at Gen Con and not try to raise money for it, but we'll see. <laughs> Probably making good money off Kickstarter, bypassing uh, retail chains and distribution, maybe. All right, let's slide this down because this is out of control. All right, let's fire it off here. Let's fire it off, okay. So just grab the two cards in hand. Yes, so let's do Consuming Void. We'll destroy these two cards. So that do seven total damage. So down to 28. Let's fire, oh, I don't have charges, that's okay. Let's fire for three, down to 25. Three more, three more, so that's down to 19. And discard up to two cards in hand, deal three for each discarded. Sure, two Phoenix Flames, which this should go in this order. And that was another six. Down to 13. Boom, boom, boom. That's her ability, Boom City right there. That's my turn. <laughs> uh, draw five. Nemesis. Uh, two discard, destroy, destroy two prep spells that cost three or more. I yeah, probably could get rid of uh, some spells. Uh, one power, and it would unleash three times if I don't do so. All right, so let's see. Next, me. I like this one. Oh, I don't have the spells to get rid of this. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, Uh-oh. And I don't have a discard to do that. Uh, okay. <laughs> Damn. It's like he's going to be unleashing three times in a minute. Okay, so let's play. Uh, do we fire that off? I think we do. Let's fire this off. We'll discard a spark. And we'll discard a, I guess, a blasting staff. Kind of pointless right now. Or I could have waited. Yeah, I'm being dumb. Let's leave that there. We'll pass the casting phase, main phase, blasting staff, fire this off to do two additional damage, which I think I've been forgetting that two extra damage. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's do two and discard one, two, so that's six, seven, eight, nine damage. Down to two. And Clouded Sapphire, first one to gain a charge. Second one, so that is six resources. I'll just gain three charges, because you know I'm gonna need those. Not really need them, but those spells love eating those. One, two, three, four, five. All right, it's me. Can I get rid of two spells? No, only drew one spell. Oh no, I got greedy. I should have left that last spell out there. Okay, uh, so I'll throw that there. Oh, I have them right here. Sorry, I didn't. I missed that was a spell. So I'll destroy these two because this is the one I wanted to destroy anyway. I don't need to keep destroying cards from hand. Although I could destroy a whole bunch of these resources probably what I should be doing, but let's not have him unleash three times. Two diamond clusters, that's six resources. Sapphire, we can gain full charges. Ooh. Well, we only have two spells in the discard, but that would finish it on the next turn. Yeah, let's do her ability. We'll gain back these two spells Wrap them up. And then this. Oh, I should have purchased first. Should have purchased first. So I'll get that into my pile. I'll pull that one back. Yeah, that's better, right? Uh, and that was five resources, but I have six, nine total. Um, sure. Spectral Echo. 
one, two, three, four, five. Nemesis. Spend seven resources to discard this card. We're in a level three card here also. Power one. The player with the most charges suffers four damage and loses all their charges. Uh, I would have left the Unleash. Just to coup de gras him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Oh, Nemesis again. Okay. So this fires off. I didn't get a chance to get rid of it. Player with the most charges suffers four damage. So I'm down to six, I guess. I can do one die. And lose all my charges. Ha ah, ha, good thing I spent them all. Ha ha ha, suck it. All right, uh, draw my card. Unleash three times or any player suffers damage equal to the number of empty supply so piles. I'll suffer one damage, that's fine. <laughs> definitely kept the, uh, whoops, definitely kept the um, Devour deck under control, I think. It feels like there's more cards in it. Like there's a lot, but they came from separate piles and stuff, so that's been good. I've been luckier there. Nemesis again, though. So spend eight resources to get rid of this. It's a power two card. Gravehold suffers two damage for each empty supply pile. Again, I think I'm okay. And here we go. Hmm, hmm. What am I going to do? Uh, yeah, I think I will do one damage. Discard up to two cards. Let's see. Hmm, yeah, I'll discard two of these. To do seven damage total, but I only need to do two destroyed yeah today was fun had a lot of cool stuff put in the market here I, I like these little combos i thought this spell lineup would suck because the whole destroying cards and then like her ability wanting to have more spells i thought i would get i would get too excited and add too many of these to my deck when i first saw it, it was like yes destroy but then once you keep destroying over and over again you run out of stuff to do damage then this just becomes a seven cost useless card but then i guess you could destroy other copies of it too but i mean that's expensive but I think I got lucky at the beginning and didn't get too heavy. I didn't get as minion focused, I don't think, this turn uh, with the cards that landed in there. But getting the big resources going off the start, which just made it like easy mode kind of, I think, just being able to get stuff going. I, I was worried I would lose, though, not having enough spells till later. And would I thought I would have got minion flooded and I wouldn't have enough to get rid of them because I, my spells weren't as big hitting as last time. But I think it got going pretty good there. Um... Mutton Chop says, I usually play two-handed, so I have two different characters with different abilities to fight with. Yeah. I don't know about playing... I, I'm, nothing wrong with doing that, but, like, if I want to play two, um, try... It is better with more Breach Mages. It is more fun to help each other out and do things with each other. I like, like uh, you know, I'll heal you, you give me some charges, that kind of stuff. Uh, that is super fun. But I would just, like, grab my wife or my daughter and have them play with me in that case. Um... Because I don't know if my brain is good enough to handle managing two characters at once, to be honest. Because <laughs> I would start to forget, like, what is in what discard pile. And then, like, what I'm looking for, what I'm building. Like, what did I buy for that person last? What did I buy for that person? And it's, like, trying to keep up with that. I, it might be a messy, messy stream. <laughs> but if I did it enough and practiced it, it, it would probably not be that bad. But, <laughs> but yeah, that was cool. I, I like this game a lot. Super fun. Super fun. And I do like it better than Legendary, that's for sure. That's for sure. But then again, this came out many, many years after Legendary. And the... I haven't played more than those the base set plus the one expansion for Legendary. But I don't know how it is with the later expansions. But the deck building game world has evolved. So it's like a deck builder that comes out five years later, of course, is going to have... A cooler twist, you would think, than one that came out near the beginning of deck builders, right? Like... When they first were getting going. Or when they first were getting popular. Uh, but yeah. And Bernardo said, to be honest, I did two mages because I found it was too difficult. Argument against myself on having four turns per two turns of Nemesis. <laughs> Maybe trying the 12 health will balance it out. Yeah, I still play at 10 and just do the four turn order. But yeah, it just says that on the back of the book, right? It's like, hey, if you're having trouble, try four turn order cards or start the game with 12 or 15 life. I like trying to make one mage work. and I just like managing one deck and one discard pile. It just feels better trying to just manage that. 
especially when I'm streaming and chatting and forgetting what I'm doing already. <laughs> That's trouble. Um, I think I'm going to call it though. I think I'm going to call it there. Uh, tomorrow we're going to do some Cloud Spire in the afternoon. I'm going to play the Air Scenario 4. So if you guys want to see some solo Cloud Spire, how that works out, uh, tune in at 1 p.m. Eastern for that. And then the next day I'm going to do Too Many Bones in the afternoon. So if you want to see some solo Too Many Bones. Uh, yeah, four turn player turn order cards is way better than three. Like, it just feels better. Just feels better. Less less chance of the minion just, or the nemesis just firing off uh, over and over and over again in a row. That's for sure. And Bernardo also tends to play while hearing music or stuff. And with two mages, I found the discard pile of one tends to grow too much. <laughs> uh. By the way, in Too Many Bones, I'm trying the campaign, and I'm liking it, playing solo. I, I do want to do a solo campaign uh, from Age of Tyranny at some point on the channel. Maybe that's what I start on Friday. Maybe that's what I start. It's a campaign for Too Many Bones. Trying some Age of Tyranny solo. And then just play like once a week and keep that going. And Matuj says here, hello, what is Aeon's End? Get out of here. Get out of here. It's the end of Aeon's End stream. You missed it. No, I'm just joking. Too many bones ordered, by the way. Oh, okay, okay. What did you order, Matuj? Did you order, like, everything? Or did you just order the core set to try it out? I'm curious. How in how in are you? How invested did you go? Mm-mm. Uh, just the base. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's the way you should always start a game. Just try the base out. Uh, I also saw they're, they're actually charging less on shipping for Europe and the US. I wish they did that for Canada, but there's like a max now for shipping. So no matter how much you order, you're only like, you're capped, which is kind of cool. And Bernard is saying, quick question. On too many bones on the 40 days, there is a special zero one one card. Is this a misprint or shall it be added to the zero one one starting cards? Do you know? Um, I don't know. I... Special zero one card. Is it like a special encounter? And does it have like the one in the bottom right corner or is it actually like card zero one? Like on the bottom numbered card. Uh, my stuff's all put away right now. Um, yeah, my stuff, I just put it all away. I, I actually have another shelf now I just built yesterday. Uh, so I had to put all my Too Many Bones stuff, like, piled in a corner with my Dark Souls and my Cloud Spire and stuff. I gotta dig it out later. How do you know how my name pronounces? I had to look it up. I felt super bad pronouncing it wrong every time. I, from where I'm standing, uh, where I'm sitting, the screen's kind of far away. And, and because of the, um... The accents and stuff above your U, uh, I keep thinking that's an I, like an English I. So I keep saying Mattias or stuff like that. But uh, I just looked it up. I just was like, how do I, I want to know how to say it? Like, yeah. So I was just like, how do you say this? I feel bad saying, saying the name wrong all the time because I know I'm butchering it. I knew I was butchering it. And I have, I have, um, had somebody in school in college that had the similar like ending on the name but uh, I forget what the name was but it was similar and I knew I knew I was saying it wrong so anyways I looked it up and yeah <laughs> just for you <laughs> but anyways am I saying it right though Matuj Matuj how you say it in English yes <laughs> anyways I want to know I want to know uh it's curious okay so anyways, I'm going to end it there, guys. Thank you for watching. I will see you tomorrow with some Cloud Spire and Friday with some Toonie Bones. Monday, we're live streaming Captain America. Awesome, awesome. And we're doing some Captain America. I'm going to play a couple different decks for Captain America on Monday for Marvel Champions. So stay tuned for that. I'll be scheduling some more live streams uh, probably over the weekend. Look for them all next week. I might do, there might be a live stream with my wife. We might get in a um, uh, Spirit Island. We might play that just for Matouche, his favorite game. He wants to see that on the channel. 
Uh, so we'll be playing some of that. <laughs> but anyways, have a good night. I'm just kidding. But have a good night. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.